Welcome back to Combat Mission Cold War, where we're going to relive the crunch turn of the Death Rite of Schwaben a few times. Rice, my opponent in this game, has been kind enough to tell me his password, which has allowed me to go back, duplicate his orders for that turn, and then replay it. To keep things simple, I've only tracked who got destroyed or damaged by who, I've only tracked for that one minute turn, and I've rerun it 30 times. This is not enough of a sample size to nail anything down in a real statistician's kind of way, and there are obviously a lot of important details that I'm not recording, but there is definitely enough here to draw out some trends and highlight the variability of in-game events. To kick off then, we're going to go back to what happened in the game, the actual events of Turn 10. All the Soviet vehicles are conveniently named. On top here, downslope from the Americans, we have Pelican Taco, Nil Kwan, and Volcatius. They're starting the turn moving to make way for the BMP platoon to exploit through. That's Kyle Reese, Antos HQ, and Giuseppe Fazio. Off to the left, in the wood proper, we have the rest of the T-62s from top to bottom. Justin Davies, Fishbowl, the Sid 42 and Sergeant Spook. Facing off against them, we have two M60s, which I've numbered. The one that moves off to the right into the field is M61, and the ones that sit still in the edge of the wood is M62. I've not bothered tracking the M113s panicking about, but there are more M60s in the centre of the map off the top of the screen, and a couple of tow vehicles that have line of sight from the right edge of the screen. So, events as they took place run as M61 knocks out Volcatius, Nil Kwan misses M61, M62 knocks out Sergeant Spook, M61 knocks out Nil Kwan, the Sid 42 fires at M62 but hits a tree, M61 immobilizes Kyle Reese with his 50 cal, M61 knocks out Pelican Taco's main gun. M61 immobilizes Antos HQ with 50 cal fire, then finishes off Nil Kwan. The Sid 42 knocks out M62. Justin Davies knocks out M61. And then, right at the end, one of the M60s in the center of the map off screen knocks out Justin Davies. This was by far the worst turn of the game on my side in terms of combat power lost, which is why we're looking at it. But it was also the most carnage filled result of all the reruns I've done. It wasn't the outright worst result though. One of the 30 reruns panned out in a pretty similar way. M61 knocks out Volcatius. Nil Kwan misses M61. M62 knocks out Sergeant Spook, who is then hit by a tow missile. M61 knocks out Nil Kwan. And up to here worked very much in line with the actual turn. Then, M62 knocks out the Sid 42 so now there's nothing really on hand to deal with the stationary M60. M61 immobilizes Carl Reese with the 50 cal before Pelican Taco scores a hit. This doesn't knock it out, but a follow-up from Justin Davies does. M62, meanwhile, has spotted the BMPs that have bunched through behind it and engages them, knocking out Giuseppe Fazio first, and then Antos HQ right at the end of the turn. So in this run, instead of Fishbowl, the Sid 42 and Giuseppe Fazio surviving unscathed to the end, we have Pelican Taco, Fishbowl and Justin Davies. Your mileage may vary somewhat, I'm calling it a worse result because M62 is still up and running, despite my forces losing the same number of vehicles outright. This result, with 8 vehicles destroyed, and the actual result with 9 vehicles destroyed, are both outliers. Again, 31 is a small sample size, but these two are on the kill heavy side of the bell curve. Runs in which 4, 5 or 6 vehicles were destroyed between both sides were much, much more common, accounting for 25 of the 31 runs, or about 80%. So let's look at an average run. We've got a bit of change of pace at the start, with M61 knocking out Nil Kwan. Volcatius, who is usually dead at this point, knocks out M61 in return. An external tow then flies in and blows up Sergeant Spook. Volcatius is knocked out by an external M60 in the centre of the map. And a little while later, M62 knocks out the Sid 42. Finally, 
to round out the turn, Kyle Reese, who has made it to the next wood with the other BMPs, puts a 73mm heat shell into the back of M62. This is a different result, with very different consequences for the rest of the game. The BMPs actually punching through was surprisingly common. They suffered no damage at all in 13 runs, or about 42% of the time. Where they might have gone from there is a different question, but three BMPs in their infantry in that wood would have been a much more useful asset than the single shell-shocked Giuseppe Fazio that made it in in the actual game. Assuming, of course, that M62, which did survive most of the time, didn't turn around and pick them off. Even with the average runs, though, there's some variability. The 28th run, despite featuring the most common kill ratio of 1 M60 to 4 Soviet vehicles, has a couple of standout events. It starts off in standard fashion, with M61 knocking out Locatius. Then, Sergeant Spook hits M61 in the rear and knocks it out, before being hit in quick succession by M62 and then a tow missile. At the same time, Antos HQ runs into the wreck of Volcatius and is destroyed when the tank's ammo cooks off. M62 then knocks out the SID-42, only to be hit in the back of the turret by a 73mm heat shell from Giuseppe Fazio. This isn't enough to knock it out, but it does provoke M62 to move, which barely ever happened. That would have made for a really interesting turn if it had happened in the actual game, but we're still in the middle of the bell curve here there are better results out there too. The lowest casualty game, for example, only involved a handful of losses. It starts with the usual M61 knocks out Volcatius, but Nel Kwan gets his first round hit and takes out M61 in the first 10 seconds. Soon after, Sergeant Spook is about to fire at M62 when he's hit by a turn. From here on out, there are no significant casualties, that's it. M62 is saved from the SID-42 by a tree, is missed by both Carl Reese and Antos HQ, blasts Antos HQ's 85 off in return, and is finally hit in the front by the SID-42, but carries on until the turn ends. There is a 105mm shell heading towards Kyle Reese when the timer runs out, and I'd say his chances of survival in the next turn are pretty slim, but that's the low casualty turn. Only three vehicles destroyed, two T-62s and one M60. The best run, on the other hand, is closer to the centre of the bell curve, with four vehicles destroyed. Once again, M61 knocks out Volcatius, and in turn is quickly knocked out by Nil Kwan. Sergeant Spook is then hit by a tow and finished off by M62, only for the SID-42 to knock out M62 in return. And that's it. 22 seconds into the turn and it's all over. The BMPs are through, there are 5 T-62s still up and running, and both M60s are out of action. It's not quite so clear-cut. Pelican Taco is engaged multiple times by M60s in the centre of the map, but all the incoming rounds are intercepted by trees. Which at least goes to show that while trees are probably a lot tougher than they should be in combat mission against certain types of ammunition, they don't discriminate. The main takeaway from all this is that there is obviously a significant amount of variability, but there are also some dominant trends. So, for example, Sergeant Spook always dies. Every single time, he never survives. This is because the turn starts with an M901 tow vehicle down by the railway line aiming right at him. In the actual turn, this tow fell short, but in 20 out of the 31 runs, about 60% of the time, it hits and destroys him. In the turns where it doesn't destroy him, and M62 gets him instead, the tow usually still scores an effective hit that would have knocked him out anyway. So, for Sergeant Spook, there isn't really a diversion point. He almost always dies at that 15 second mark. In a similar vein, Fishbowl always survives mostly because he's simply too far in the wood to see or be seen. M61 also always dies, and one of the key determinants controlling the overall losses inflicted is how long it takes M61 to go down. Nil Kwan is reloading at the start of the turn with a solid spot, so the key diversion point here is whether Nil Kwan can land the shot or not. 
and he does 14 out of 31 times, about 45%, which is maybe not so bad against a hull down moving target when under stress. The bigger question is, how have I ended up in a situation where I have 7 T62s and 3 BMPs versus 2 M60s, but the end result is heavily controlled by one specific T62? One of the reasons for this is this is a very compartmented fight. If we go into the editor and set up 7 T62s and 3 BMPs against 2 M60s on a flat as a pancake map with no obstacles, guess what happens? The M60s manage to score one or two kills, and then they're all knocked out. This obviously isn't what happened in my battle with Rice. What we've actually got is two separate engagements broken up by the terrain. M61 is engaged by Nil Kwan, Pelican Taco and Vocatius, joined later by Justine Davy. so a weapon ratio of 1 to 3 or 4, if we ignore the BMPs on the basis that they never engaged M61. M62 on the other hand, is engaged by Sergeant Spook and the SID-42, with some important backup from an M901. It's a weapon ratio of 2 to 2. On top of this, the ratio obviously changes as losses accumulate, with Sergeant Spook always exiting the picture early. The engagement on the right of the woods always falls down to 1 to 1 or 2 to 1 in favour of the US, depending on whether the M901 spots the SID-42. And this plays out in favour of the US. M62 had a pretty good survival record across the reruns. But even this compartmentalisation isn't enough, because the actual engagements aren't only restricted by the terrain, they're also restricted by smoke, dust, distraction and the difficulties in accurate identification, all taking place under stress. In other words, they're also restricted by spotting. It's very easy to focus on the difficulties the Soviet tanks seem to have seeing things, but it's worth noting that M62 never spotted the SID-42 in the actual game turn, despite being crack instead of regular, despite the SID-42 firing a shot at almost point-blank range, and similar to the tanks of 3rd platoon engaging M61, despite apparently looking directly at it. So there's a great deal of variability here too. The big picture isn't that I ended up on the harsher end of the bell curve of possible results, and that I just got unlucky. The big picture is that trying to push forward into difficult enemy occupied terrain like that was pretty much a terrible idea. The Soviet strength in combat mission Cold War lies in mass, it lies in having as many units spotting and engaging as possible. Moving into and around that wood fragmented the fight into a series of smaller tank-on-tank -tank actions, when what I really needed to do was bring my numbers to bear. It was a bad decision from the get-go, and no amount of luck was going to make it work in the grander scheme of things. But on the other hand, it's provided a really interesting insight into the level of variability you can get in combat mission, and how engagements can pan out. Hope you all enjoyed this. My opponent Rice, Dom from the Combat Mission Discord and myself go into the game in a lot more depth in our discussion video which I'll link down below. Be sure to check that out if you want to hear more about our thoughts on the game, why it all went wrong for me, and what a better way to use the Soviets would be. I'll catch you in the next video.